Welcome to the class. In the series of Indian Companies Act 2013, today we are going to discuss about membership. In this video, we are going to discuss three things. First, definition of membership according to Indian Companies Act. Who can be a member and how to acquire membership. Okay, let's see that. Yes, section 2. Subsection 55 of Indian Companies Act 2013 talks about membership of a company. Okay, so generally we assume that a member is a shareholder. That is how it is generally understood and popularly talked about. But the, the problem with this concept is that we assume always a member is a shareholder. But that is possible only in case if the company is having a share capital. But what about those companies without share capital? They do have members, isn't it? Yes. So that is how we need to understand the concept of membership more widely. So according to section 2, subsection 55, a member is the one who subscribes to the memorandum. That means... The first subscribers of the memorandum will be the members of the company. They may be shareholders, may not be, but they are members of the company. Then any other person who agrees to become a member by entering his name in the register of members of the company. Okay, register of members is an important document which shows the names of all the members of the company. And therefore, by allowing your name to be put in the register of members, you are agreeing to become a member of the company. Okay, so two group of people. First, subscribers to the memorandum and those who are agreeing those who allow the company to write their name in the register of members. Okay, so these people in a company with share capital are shareholders, isn't it? But if the company does not have share capital, in that case also, members are there who are subscribers to the memorandum or who allow the company to write their name in the register of members. Okay, and in case if the company is having a share share capital, normally the name of shareholders are written as beneficial owners in the records of depositories. Okay, so that's about, that's the answer to the big question, who is a member? If we want to become a member of a company, what should we do? And how do we acquire membership? Yes, let's see. The first and the foremost method of acquiring membership is by subscribing to the memorandum. When the company is formed, company has to make a new memorandum, isn't it? Yes. So, those people who are ready to become the first members of the company, their names and addresses will be written in the memorandum, in the subscription close. Okay. They are the first members of the company. Then, Qualification shares are those shares, purchase of which will qualify you to become a director. As we all know, Companies Act is not giving specific qualification to become a director. But by having provisions in the Articles of Association, the companies may make certain qualifications, including buying qualification shares. So, a person who is buying qualification share will become a shareholder and therefore will also become a member. Allotment. Com when company is issuing shares, the person who is making an application might get shares allotted by the company. Once a person gets it allotted, he also becomes a member. Now, transmission. Transmission takes place when at the death of one shareholder, his shares, like all other assets, devolves upon the legal heir. Say for example, A dies. A is a shareholder of a company. Automatic, automatically, A's daughter or son, A's, A's spouse or daughter or son will become the holder of those shares and thereby they become the members of the company. 
Next is transfer. By buying shares, you become the member of the company. Estoppel. We have already discussed this concept of estoppel. Estoppel is something by which you are allowing people to believe at the existence of something which is not there. But either by action or gesture or by silence, you are creating an atmosphere by which other person believes on it. Then later you cannot deny it. This is the principle of estoppel. So here, if you are allowing the company to write your name in the register of members when you are not a member, afterwards you cannot deny your liability as a member. Okay, now what about joint members? Yes, more than one person together can hold shares and become a member. But in case of joint membership, the voting right will be given to only one person and generally for voting purpose and other purposes, the person whose name appears first will be considered as a member. Okay, so these are the various methods by which one can acquire membership in a company. Okay, now let's see what is our next question. Who can become a member? Yes, as we all know, membership is an agreement. Therefore, a person should be competent to enter into contract. That means he should not be a minor, he should not be unsound mind and he should not be disqualified by law as well. Okay. Therefore, company is an artificial legal person. Company can enter into contract. Therefore, company can become a member of another company. Say for example, LIC of India can purchase shares in another company and become a member there. Okay. Now, what about partnership firm? Can they? No. Why? Because partnership firm, unlike a company, is not a separate entity. Partnership firm, as such, is not a legal personality. And therefore, even if the partnership firm acquires shares, becomes member, that becomes member, that will be in the name of individual partners. Same thing is true about a trustee. If trustee purchases shares, he will be a member in his individual capacity. A registered society like a company is an artificial legal person and therefore a registered society can become a member. An NRI, no doubt, a non-resident Indian can become a member of a company but he needs permissions. Okay, then insolvent person. See, Generally, an insolvent person cannot enter into contract and therefore there is no question of insolvent person becoming a member. But what if he was a member and later he became insolvent? Yes, in such cases, the official receiver takes it up. Till the official receiver's name enters as a member, he will the person who became insolvent will continue to be the member. Okay. Now comes minor. Yes, minor cannot enter into contract and therefore minor cannot become a member. But at the same time, minor can be given fully paid up shares and therefore minor can become a member. But minor will not have any liabilities. Okay, so we understood who all can become a member. So in this video, we have seen what is the definition of membership, how to acquire member mem how to acquire membership and who all can become a member. Okay. More details are there about membership in the coming videos. If you have any doubts, if you have any suggestions, if you want to make any comment, please make use of my comment box. I'll be very happy to help.